in today's class what i will do is i'll simply solve the numericals from chapter 5 okay this whole numericals which i'm doing is from chapter 5 and all the numericals is from iic questions so these are the questions that are given in the textbook itself so you can refer your book for the question i'll just read out the question okay uh, first question which i'm going to solve is question number six that is calculate the current electric current density in a uniform wire connected to a battery of emf 3.5 volt and negligible internal resistance. The resistance of the wire is 2 ohm and its cross area of cross section is 0 0.70 to the power minus 6 meters square. So let us write down what are the question what are the values given in the question. First value which is given in the question is EMF or the voltage of the battery. Okay, EMF is 3.5 volt. Uh, negligible internal resistance. So you don't have to write the resistance, the resistance of the wire. Okay, the resistance of the wire is 2 ohm and the area of cross section of wire is 0 0.70 to the power minus 6 meter square. Now we have to find the current density that is J. Okay? To find the current density, what we know is J is equals to current passing through a particular area. So first of all the values from given values, we have A but we don't have I. So what we know is our I is from Ohm's law V by R. So first of all let us find I. I is equal to V by R. So your V EMF is 2.5, R is 2. So from your, uh, after doing some calculation what do we get is we get 1.75, sorry this is ampere as this is the current. Now we have got the current, so we can find the current density. That is I by A. Our I is 1.75, area is 0 0.70 to the power minus 6 meter square. So after doing the calculation, 10 to the power minus 6 will go up and become 10 to the power 6. So 1.75 divided by 1.70 will be your 2.5. The unit of current density is and say per meter square. Okay, this is question number six. Now, similarly, I'll do rest of the questions. Uh, next question which I'm going to solve for today is question number 20. Okay, from the book, question number 20. Now, the question is a 100 watt, 220 volt bulb is connected to a 110 volt DC source. Calculate the power consumed by the bulb. So the values given in the question is power of the bulb is 100 volt and voltage which is consumed by the bulb is 220 volt. Now, but the DC volt, uh, the DC source to which the bulb is connected is uh, the DC voltage. Okay, the DC voltage is 110 volt. Now, from the question, uh, you might think that power is already given. So, what are we going to find? We have to again find the power. But the bulb works on 220 volts and the power of the bulb is 100 volt. But the DC source, it is connected to 110 volt of uh, voltage. So, how much power is now consumed when the voltage is reduced? We will check that. Now, to find this, first of all, now whenever the bulb is connected to any sort of, sort of a circuit, then the bulb will act as a resistor. I hope you already know that because of the resistance which is there in the bulb only, the bulb grows. Okay, so let's find the resistance. Now from the equation of power, it is V square divided by R. There is one equation of power where we can find which is related to voltage and the resistance. From here we can find resistance that will be R is equal to V square by P. Now, voltage is 220 volts of the bulb because we are finding the resistance of the bulb and power is 100 volts. So this becomes 100. So after doing the calculation, okay, I'll just write the value of the bulb after the calculation. For doing the calculation, it can be right over here is it becomes 484 ohm. Okay, the bulb resistance is 484 ohm. Now after getting the resistance, we can find the power using again the same relation. But now what is different is the voltage. Now power is equal to V squared by R. 
Now the voltage is given as 110 and the power is 484. This is correct. After doing the calculation, what we get is we get 25 volts. Okay, this is the question number 20. Now there are many questions which I, I just hurry up. Uh, next question which I am going to solve today is question number 21. Okay, I am only selecting the questions which are there, which was there in IFC. So question number 21. In this question, <coughs> uh, the maximum power dissipated in 1000, sorry, 10,000 ohm resistor is 1 watt. What is the maximum current? So in this question, the values which are given is resistance. That is 10,000 ohm and the power is 1 volt. This is the maximum resistance or maximum power dissipated in this big resistance. So we have to find the amount of current. Now I hope you already know the relation between power resistance and current. Power is equals to I squared into R. So, from here what you find is you have to find I. I is equals to D by R that is under root. When you remove the square, you write under root. So, if you put the values, it is 1 by 1000. Okay, after doing the calculation, you get this as 0 0.01 ampere. So, this will be the maximum current which is dissipated when the power is 1 volt and the resistance is 10,000 ohm. Okay. Now next, uh, the next question will be question number sorry, question number thirty nine. Okay, there is a circuit in this question, so I'll first of all wrap all this, then I'll draw the circuits. In this question, we have to find the equivalent resistance. There will be different types of uh, complicated circuits. And you have to find the resistance. Question number 39. Question number 39. First of all, I'll draw the circuit of color. There is two bulbs. B1 and B2 which is connected in a series with the DC source, sorry, this is AC source of 200 volt. So whenever we have a circuit like this which is in series, what we know is potential of the potential difference of the two bulb will be different because it is in series whereas the current which is flowing in the bulb will be the same because in the derivation of resistance what we know is if anything is in series, current is same, voltage is different. Okay, now we'll solve this question. Let me see what the question is. Uh, calculate, uh, sorry, two bulbs B1 and B2 are connected in series with an AC source of EMF, EMF 200 volt as shown. The label on the bulbs read 200 volt 60 volt. Okay, now first of all let me write down B1. B1 has got a voltage of, B1 has got voltage, it is V1. And the power which is consumed at this one will be 60 volt. Now V2 has a voltage of 200 volt and power consumed by this V2 will be 100 volt. Now what you have to calculate is, you have to calculate three things. Number one, R1 is to R2. Number two, P1 is to P2 and number 3, V1 is to V2. So there are three things which has to be calculated in this numerical. I'll do one of the ratio, I'll solve one. Rest you can try it. I'll just uh, tell you how to solve that. Okay. Now, first of all, when we find our resistance, okay, when we find resistance, uh, then first of all, let us write down the relation between power, voltage, and resistance. We know that. Power is equal to V squared divided by R. So R is equal to V squared by P. Using the same relation, we will find the resistance. So for 1, let us first find R1. Okay. 
R1 will be V1 square divided by P1. So, by using the values, that is V1 is 200 square divided by P1 is 60. So, when we solve this, we get
are going to add two alternative in parallel. So there are two resistors. R1 60 ohm, R2 90 ohm are connected in parallel. If electric power consumed by the resistor R1, the power consumed by R1 T1 is 15 watt. So what will be the uh, capital the power consumed by R2 that is P2? Okay, this is the question. So over here what you have to find is you have to find the resistance or power which is consumed by the resistance that is R2. Okay. Now for this one, uh, what what information we have got in the circuit is come from the circuit is R1 and R2 is connected in parallel. So whenever uh, these things are connected in parallel, V is same. So when V is same, first of all let us find V. Okay. Let us find V for the first resistance R1 and the same V can be used to calculate P2. So V is equal to from the equation V uh, power is equal to V square divided by R. V is under root P1 R1. Okay. Putting the values over here. 15 into 60. So after doing some calculation what we get is we get 30 volt. This is for uh, this is a V and in parallel connection V for R1 and R2 will be the same. So now we can find P2. P2 is equal to V square divided by R2. So your V is V square divided by R2 is 90. So doing the calculation, what we get is we get 10 volts. Okay? This is how we do the question. Now, in the next question, uh, the question is Question number 53. In this question, we have got three different circuits. First of all, let me draw the circuits. There are three different circuits for question number 53. Circuit A. Okay, now in this circuit, what you have to do is you have to find the equivalent resistance between the point A and B. Now to find the equivalent resistance, let us first look at the circuit, whether it is in series or parallel combination. So looking at the circuit, it is neither in series nor in parallel. This is a Wistone bridge. Now Wistone bridge, we haven't studied that, but it is a bridge over here. If the like, there are two resistances on this side, it is divided by a bridge. Okay, now let us. Right, this one is R1, this is R2, this resistance is R3 and this is R4. Now, the rule of the Wittstone bridge is if the bridge is properly balanced, if the ratio of R1 by R2 equals to the ratio of R3 by R4, okay, the ratio of resistance, if it's the same, then the no, then current will not flow through this middle portion, that is through the bridge, that is one rule. So before doing this numerical, let us check if this follows the rule or if the ratio is same or not. So R1 by R2 is 6 by R2 is 4. Okay. This one is equals to. So R3 is 9. This is 6. So when we reduce this, we can reduce it by 3. I'm sorry, 2. And this by 3. So what we get is we get 3 by 2, 3 by 2. So this bridge is properly balanced. It means that the current will not flow through this middle portion. Now let us again draw this circuit in a simpler way. So there are two resistances over here connected in series, okay? Because this doesn't come into play. So there are two resistances which is there in series and over here also two resistances in series. Now, this is 6, 9, 4 and 6. If resistors are connected in series, then we can simply add, uh, this will be R1 plus R3 
R1 plus R3. 9 plus 6 will be 50. And this also we can simply add. I am writing this in a rough way, but you should not write like this. Okay, you should write properly. Uh, 4 plus 6 it will be 10. So now 15 and 10 ohm resistance are connected in parallel. So we will apply the formula of parallel that is 1 by R. This is for resistance 1 and 3. This is for resistance 2 and 4. Okay. So now 1 by 15 plus 1 by 10. I hope you can solve this. Solve it. Your answer for this question will be 6 ohm. Okay. Just check the answer. Solve this. It will be 6 ohm. Now, in the same question, we have another circuit. Which is B. So this is connected to B, this is 
connected to A. Now it becomes a learn. This is 2, this is 4, 1 and 2. Now the resistance when it is in series, 2 plus 4 is 6. When it is in series, 2 plus 1 is 3. Now 3 and 6 is in parallel. So 1 by R is equal to 1 by 6 plus 1 by 3. You can solve this. And I'll just give you the answer. The resistance from your will be 2 ohm. Okay, just for the calculation, you get 2. This is for B. Now, in the same one, we have got another circuit also. That is quite similar, similar to question number B. But over here, there is no resistance. I just love this one. Okay, this is for question number C. The question number C. This is E, C, D, and B. Now let me see the values. 6, 6, and 6, 4. Okay, this is the circuit. Now let us see. And let us make a simpler circuit for this one. So for that, the simple way to uh, look at the circuit is, let's see which, which two points are connected. A is connected to C. So A and C are connected. Now again, C is connected to D. And D is also connected to uh, Now look here, this portion A and this D are the two points which are connected. It means they are the same point. So, this C is connected to D as well as it is connected to A. That means A and C, A and D are the same point. Okay, so C is connected to D. So the C is connected to D, which is this point. So we we'll draw a circuit over here. This is over here and it's connected to a same point. Now the third resistance over here. D is connected to D. And this B is connected to C. It means that C and D. There is no resistance in between, it means the two are the same point. So C and B are the same point. Now D is connected to B. So D is connected to B. Okay, this is one way to find the resistance. If, if it's quite complicated, then I'll again draw this in a simpler way. Okay? If you have understood this, then it's well and good. If you haven't understood them, then... Okay. First of all, let me, let me draw A and C. One resistance between A and C. Another between C and D. C and D. Another between D and B. Now, there are two points connected. A and D is connected. A and D is connected with a wire. Again, B and C is connected. B and C is connected. This is a simple one. Now, you can see that nothing is there in between. So, A, you can directly connect A and D. And over here also, nothing is there in between B and C. So, we can directly connect B and C because they are already connected. So, if you draw in a simpler way, this point is D and A is also connected to D. So, this, yes, this two points can be connected to C. So, this is your C. Now, A is over here, which is connected to This connected to this point. Again, this D and B is also connected, and B and C is connected. So this can be a B, and one resistance can be connected like this. So the values are six, six, and six. So this kind of a circuit shows that if there is no resistance in between and if it is connected like this, it means that these three resistances are in parallel. So 1 by R is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. So when everything is in parallel, it will be 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6. The answer is 6. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So we will get R is equal to 2. The last numerical for today. 
will be question number question number 58 okay that will be the last numericals which I am doing question number 58 the question is a metallic bar has a resistance of 3 ohm at 0 degree celsius so at 0 degree celsius when temperature is 0 degree okay when temperature is 0 degree temperature is 0 degree your resistance is 3 ohm now when temperature is when temperature is 150 degree celsius now we know that when we increase the temperature the resistance of the wire also increases so temperature when it is zero when temperature is zero resistance is three temperature is 150 your resistance is 4.8 what you have to find is you have to find the temperature coefficient there is a formula for temperature coefficient i haven't done this there is no derivation for this one but this thing you have already started in class 11 also. Formula is RT minus RO divided by RO into T. So the values RT is 4.8, R0 is 3, R0 is 3 again, temperature is 150. Now this will get your answer that is, and the uh, unit of temperature coefficient is degree centigrade Celsius inverse. Okay? The simple formula you need to remember the formula of the temperature coefficient. Just remember the formula, the equation is not required for this one. Okay, I've solved all the numericals which are from ISC in which is there in your book. So if there is any sort of confusion, you can always call me or WhatsApp me. Uh, if there is any doubt, okay. So this much of for today and we'll continue in the next class with a new chapter.